so uh, let me just put a box on the ground here. And so we, we talked about, you know, getting something on top of that box, like a teapot or something, right? So if we do that, it's, it doesn't quite work because it just puts the teapot on the ground, right? You, you try to do it, it, it just doesn't, doesn't let you. So it's, when I want to put it, something on top of that box, like a teapot, um, there's, there's a little checkbox up here that says auto grid, and I can turn that on. And now um, the cursor has a nice little gizmo on it, like a floating gizmo. And once I get over an object, it, it recognizes the, the surface, right? So if I put it on the side, you can see the Z axis. So this, this aligns uh, and recognizes the surface. So whatever I make on the, see, now it, it snaps or it, it aligns to that surface. So if I keep doing that, maybe a cylinder in this case. So um, here we go. See how the cylinder's made? Normally a cylinder would be the Z axis. It just aligns that Z axis. I could even do it, you know, cylinder on cylinder and it comes off on that, on that side. So whatever, wherever that cursor is, it's lining the Z axis up perpendicular to that surface. So that's pretty useful, especially with boxes and stuff. So that's the auto grid, uh, very useful and uh, um, can be used for, to help align things just nicely. Okay, so let me get a cone. I'll just put a cone on the ground here. That's Okay, now I'm gonna put, now let's say I, I have some stuff on here and I, I wanna put this cylinder right here, okay? So I have the select tool, just the regular select tool. I can hit Q on the keyboard to get that tool. And um, so that allows me just to select things without accidentally moving them and stuff. So if I can select stuff with the move tool, but if, I, if I'm a little too fast with it, you can see how I accidentally um, kind of move that as as I um, as I tried to select it. So Q is just the plain old move, uh, not even a move tool, but it's just a select tool. So so one thing I do want to show is how you can align things together. There's actually a tool called the Align tool, and I have my cursor on it now. It's um, just well. It's, it's this tool here. So the way this tool works, the align tool, is uh, select the object you want to move, right? So in this case, it's the cylinder. And then my idea is to put this cylinder on top of this cone, right? So I have the cylinder selected, and then I click the align tool, and then I'm gonna click on the, the, the cone, or the object I wanna put it to, right? So it's the, so that's that. Then it does it, but it also gives me this box where I can adjust what's going on with it. And this does use the coordinate axes. So right now the X and Y positions are aligned and so is the Z, but that the, the Z is a little less uh, obvious than the X and Y. You can see that they're centered, but really what they're doing is they're aligning the pivot points. Now for the cylinder and the cone, it's basically the bottom center, right, of these two rounded objects. So that, that makes sense. But what I don't want is the Z because that puts the cylinder in the cone rather than on the cone, right? So I can uncheck it, but it won't do anything because the they were both on the ground anyway. So it's not moving the Z anyway. So I'm just gonna click apply and that clears the checkboxes. And now, um, I'm going to use these options below the coordinate axis. So I'm going to turn on just the Z. And what I want to do is align uh, as far as the pivot points go. That's the bottom of both those objects. So I want the, um, not the pivot point of the, of the uh, current object, but, well, yeah, I do want the pivot point. 
but the target object, the cone, I want it to be at its maximum in the z direction. So that's the top, right? So put it on there. And now that cylinder is centered on the top of that cone. So we'll click OK. And that's it. So now I have that cylinder directly and centered and on top of that cone. Does that make sense? Any, any questions about that? Should we try a couple more? A couple more examples of that? The align tool also allows you to align orientation, right? So let's let's move the this cylinder. Okay. And I'm gonna move it to be on top of this slanted cylinder, this one I had auto gridded on top of, you know, next to this cylinder. So I'm going to align these two cylinders, the the um, inclined one with this nice large um, other one. Well, it's actually this big tan cylinder with this bluish one. So I select the big cylinder that I want to move, use the align tool again, and then click on uh, the inclined cylinder. Uh, now, it picked up the last settings that I had before, so I'm just going to just do the X, Y, and Z again, and pivot point to pivot point. So now I can see that the bases of, oh, I can't move my, I can't zoom or pan right now because this box is not a floating box. Anyway, I, I can kind of tell that the two pivot points are directly on top of each other, but um, now I don't have the, the orientation correct, um, but I do have. So let's, I'm going to click apply here. And that clears everything out and leaves it where it was, is. And now I have a line orientation, right? So um, all it takes is two. You don't have to really worry about, you know, what it is. But um, really it's the Y direction that I'm concerned with. And that's because the X direction is aligned. The Z direction, I mean, uh, yeah, orientation, I should say, is aligned. But if I click on Y, it rotates it about that Y axis, as if the Y was the axle on which it was going to rotate about, the line, if that makes sense. So there it goes. Now it's aligned, uh, but now the larger cylinder is totally encapsulating, and I can't even see the smaller one. So I actually want to put it on top. I want it to align with the... Um, smaller one, um, but that just isn't, well, that could work, that could work, so I'm going to click apply, and if I think about it, maybe I could do, you know, in the x direction, I could do one at a time, right, so in the x, maybe I could set the current object being the large cylinder, so its pivot point is what I want, and it's minimum because the X is actually increasing to my right, not the left. So maybe minimum on that. And so now it's aligned minimally, minimum, right? And then um, I can click apply. And then in the Y, or actually the Y is good. The Z is what I want next. So maybe um, maximum, maybe, and then, that's that's close, but let's click OK here. And so not quite, right? Didn't quite work. It, it got sort of close, but it, it you know using those rectangular coordinates, it didn't it didn't really work. So um, going to undo. Right? So I'll put that back. That was one whole option, right? So this time. Before I use the align tool, I'm going to change my reference coordinate system. I hope everybody can see that little pop-up box. Sometimes Zoom doesn't catch those little pop-ups. But anyway, my cursor is over where it says view. Is that OK? So I'm going to pull that list down, and I'm going to choose local. So this will help. Um, what that does is it, it's kind of like the auto grid. It, it lines up the axes with the object. So um, that, that's kind of what I want. 
So if I select like this object right here, I'm using the move tool right now, but see how the Z is in the direction of the, of the cylinder rather than the grid or something like that. And so that's the difference there. So if I use local, let's see what happens now. So with the align tool. So I click the align tool and then I click on the cylinder I want. And now see how it says align position, but it says local here instead of what it was before, which is kind of not as useful. Okay, so I'm gonna do the pivot point to pivot point again, just in the X, Y, and Z, and there it goes. And I'll apply that, and then again, orientation in the Y. Well, this time it's X, right? Because the local coordinates, or the local axis is the X axis here. So if I put the, well, maybe not, <laughs> it didn't seem to, want to do it. So X and Y, it's still the Y, isn't it? That doesn't really make sense. Oh, um, actually it kind of does make sense now. The, um, the X, the Z axes, um, if that lines up, then then those are lined up. But right now I'm just seeing the the objects coordinate plane. But now with the Z lined up, I can click apply and it should align to it. See, there we go. And the Y, if I did the Y also, it's, the X is the only one that where they're the same and it doesn't see it any different. So actually it was either the X or, I mean the Y or the Z that actually lines those two up. Now here's the, here's the good part. Um, so now what I want to do is in the Z direction, I'll line the pivot point of the big cylinder with the maximum and there, okay, that, and that puts it right on top of it, even though it's at that angle. So now I have the, the cylinders lined up with each other, centered and um, end to end. So that's that's not all the align tool does, and it has a scale option as well. Uh, we'll use that often, but um, the scale almost never. <laughs> so, all right. Any questions about that? Okay. Sounds good, I guess. Um, right. I had a question. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Um, how did you get it um, to the cylinder to sit on top of the other one? Well, I mean, I got it aligned to where uh, the smaller cylinder is hidden inside the bigger one, but how did you get it to go right on the end of it? Yeah. So in that same box, you hit apply, and so that clears out all your check boxes. So check the Z axis, right? And, and then check maximum on the target object, right? So you still have the pivot point. So what I'm seeing here is the large cylinder, its pivot point is aligned with the maximum Z of the smaller cylinder, cylinder three in my case. Okay, all righty, I got it. Awesome, good. Okay, thank you. Thanks for asking, okay, nice. Well, there's a whole lot more, um, you know, as far as the tools go um, that you can do. And a lot of it has to do with this coordinate system stuff. So I, I do want to explain that a little bit more, I guess. So let me use all the viewports here. Okay. So um, right now I'm on local coordinate system and I can see in every viewport the Z is pointing in the direction of the object, right? And so if I select some other object, the Z changes to the different objects, right? So makes sense, makes sense. Um, but if I have like, this is the default though. And so this is the problem. Um, let me pick some other object. See, so I have like this large cylinder that has this angle to it. And, you know, there, there's the Z coordinate just popping straight up and down. Now the, the gizmo is aligned with the grid, right? But if I look at 
and that that's fine. I can see that in the top view, the I don't even see the z-axis because that's an orthogonal view. That means I'm not seeing any depth, and I only see the x and y directions, right? So that's fine. That's fine. And in the top, I mean the front and the and the left views, I do see the z, and I see in the front view I see the z-x, and in the left view I see the z-y uh, axes, which totally makes sense, right? But here's what doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's um, because it's aligned to the view, that's only because the perspective view is, is what's highlighted here. And so if I, if I just uh, pan around or zoom in, in another view, look what happened. So now in my perspective view, the Z has changed, right? And, and it's because of the view. So the X is to the right, the Z is, the Y is upside down, up and down, I mean, and the Z is coming in and out of the screen, and which makes the top view, the Z pointing down, uh, the X to the right, and in the left view, the Z is pointing to the right, and the Y is pointing up and down. Um, so, so I think that's, that can be very confusing, although thinking about it, in just the front view's point of view, everything else, it, it's consistent, right? So the Z is pointing down where it's coming out of the screen. So I'm looking at the tip of the Z axis, basically. It's coming at me. And so I see the, the X to the right, and the Z would be coming in and out of the screen in the top view or up and down in the front view and so forth. However, <laughs> in most cases, that's, you know, the having the coordinate system change every time you switch views is um, a little disconcerting and, and, it, and it throws you off sometimes. So um, a lot of times it's useful to just use the world coordinate system where Z is just always up and down out of the, out of the ground. So it doesn't matter what view is highlighted. The Z is always up and down in the world. And I think that's just easier to, to just mentally keep track of. So a lot of times I just spend the time to come up here and just change the move tool to the world coordinate system and especially the rotate tool. That, that's kind of confusing too. So if I just change those two to world, then you know the world makes sense, <laughs> so to speak. Okay, so that's your reference. Uh, coordinate system. That's just your reference uh, orientation, if you will, like the world or the view. There, there are a lot of different ones, actually. So we did talk about local, which means whatever you have selected, and that's useful sometimes too. If I just need to move, you know, if this was a piston or something like that and I was on local, I'm going to move, use the move tool and change that to local, then, you know, I could, I could just grab that and I could move this in the direction so if I was modeling like a bow and arrow or something like that, and I needed that the, the local coordinate system to be in the direction that the arrow would shoot or something at this angle, then I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, that would be really difficult to move it in this direction without the local coordinate system, in other words. So, so there. <laughs> so I'm going to put it back to world. Now there's some other ones too that we'll talk about as we go along, but um, here's here's an interesting one, and that's working, right? So, um, well, I'll I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I still before I can use the working one, I have to explain the next thing I wanted to talk about, and that's the snapping, right? Um, I think we're familiar with like in Photoshop or Illustrator, what snapping allows you to do is, is get, if you're close enough to like a pixel or a grid intersection or something like that, then the cursor will, will align itself to exactly that rather than just close. And so that makes it much more precise. And that's what's going on. And I have five different snaps here. That, that we have to explain. Um, the easiest one to explain, well, not the easiest, but, but the most common one to use is the, just the, the regular snap. Now we also have angle snap. So these two are very important. Um, so if I, um, all I gotta do is right mouse button click on this three magnet snap, or 
uh, you can hit S on the keyboard just to toggle it, but right clicking it allows you to edit what is being snapped, right? So right now it's on vertex. Um, what if I want to grid points? So what if I have both of those on? So what can I do with that? Well, I'll show you. How about I pick this box? It has a vertex, right? Right. Um, I don't have the snap on, so I can't, you know, move my cursor like to this corner and have it do anything because, well, it's the snap's not on. I can turn the snap on just by left clicking it or hitting S on the keyboard. So now it's on. And so if I get close enough to a grid point, right, it'll snap to it or a corner here, it'll snap to it. Now, if I click on this and drag my mouse, then I can snap that corner or that vertex to the a grid point. So now that corner and that grid point are like totally, totally on e on on top of each other there. So they're coincident. Yeah, if we zoom in too far, it'll go away. Okay. Anyway, and that grid's a little hard to see. There we go. That's a little better. Right. So I can just click and snap the object to the lo the the grid point. So, so that's useful. Um, we also have lots of other um, different ones. You can snap the pivot of something to uh, to other grid points or vertices or grid lines, even. So we'll we'll get into those as well as needed. But in, in any case, you can hit S for snap, and that turns it on or off. Now, angle snap, um, that's for rotating. So if I want to rotate this box, um, it'll just smoothly rotate, right? Or if I turn on the angle toggle and right click it, I get, well, really, this is the same box, but if you go to options, I can, uh, here we go angle right five degree increments so let's go 45 just to show the difference so now i'm going to rotate this box um, around and i can see that i can only rotate it in 45 degree increments increments so there so it only snaps to 45 degrees Let's put it back to five. Five is a good angle, but not always a good one for what we're doing. So there I am, five, 10, 15, 20, 45, 55. So that makes it nice to get exact uh, rotations that you want, and especially if you're gonna do that with other objects. So, so there's the angle snap. Usually I leave that on. I don't leave the, the regular snap on uh by default because sometimes i just want to move something and the snaps kind of get in the way so um, that's why the keyboard toggle is is very useful so just a for angle and s for snap and so s turns on the regular moving when you move things snapping and a is for rotating for angle okay and then we have the percent snap. So if I want to scale something, I'm not going to demonstrate that, but basically I can scale it in 5% increments or, or even 1% increments or something that can snap to it. And the last one, uh, the spinner snaps, right? So here's the box. Let's go to the modify panel. And here are all, I have six spinners to even look at, right? So what if I, I can right click on that one and here's, um, oh, I'm gonna increase my undo level to 100, so I can, that's nice. But if I look a little bit further down, here we go, under spinners, um, the precision is three decimals and the snap is to one whole unit, right? Well, why would I want three decimals if I will snap to one whole unit, right? Um, well, you'll see, let's, uh, I can turn that on, but I can leave it off as well and just turn it on. So now it's on, now it's off, right? So I'm going to leave it on and let's change the height of this or look any of these dimensions, right? So if I click and, you know, 
there's three ways to get this number to change, right? You can just type in, you know, you can just type the number, you can click on the spinner on the up arrow or the down arrow and, and change it uh, individually. See how it's changing in one unit increments? So if I click and drag, um, it's, it smoothly operates it and, and it doesn't, it keeps it to three decimal places, but um, it, it's not dragging in one uh, unit increments is what I'm trying to say. So that's, that's the three. So a click will change it one unit at a time. A click and a drag will, will change it just depending on your zoom level, really. So far, so good. My computer crashed, but yeah, so far, so good. Oh, yeah. Um, trying to zoom and do 3ds Max is, is a little bit, <laughs> that's computer intensive. It'll, it'll heat things up anyway. So yeah, that's to be expected, I guess. So sorry about that. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that snap off. Um, that's, that's a good one to leave on perhaps, but I'm gonna turn it off for now. All right, um, now that we can work with snaps here, so I had grid points, so let me um, right click on that. I'm gonna turn off grid points. I'm just gonna work at vertex right now. And so vertex is my only snap target here, and I have the snap turned on. And I have my rotate tool. So I want to rotate this thing. Um, but let's say I want to rotate it about this corner, right? So um, that's, that's where this reference coordinate system is going to come in. And I put it on working. OK, so now the rotate's on the working um, coordinate system. And now, the, now I can, um, well, you might think you can just click and drag on this, but um, it's still just going to rotate about the center, about the pivot point. So that's not that's not helping me much. Even though I'm snapping to this corner, what if I want to rotate about this corner? Well, this is what you would do: um, change your um, what it uses, right? So here's the reference coordinate system. If you put it on working and change the the selection target, if you will to the reference coordinate system, right? So if I hover over that, yeah. Use the transform coordinate center. Well, if it's on working, then whatever snap you're on is the, the coordinate center. So if I, if I do that, then um, I can click, and my cursor is going to change. So if I click on this corner with that snap on, so I have working, I have use coordinate transform, or use the transform coordinate center, and I have the snap turned on, then I should be able to click and drag on this and see how it's rotating about that point. So now I can rotate it about the snapped corner. Now it's only rotating it about the Z axis right now, but that doesn't mean that I couldn't just click on one of these rings, such as the Y coordinate, right? So now I've highlighted. I've constrained the axis to the Y, and now when I rotate it, I'm rotating the box about the, its Y coordinate at the vertex. So that can be very useful. Does that make sense so far? <laughs> It's a little bit complicated, but but pretty useful as far as like getting stuff aligned. Now you might think, okay, that sounds really good because I'd want to animate that like a box opening or a lid of something, you know, opening. Like if the cylinder was real small, I could I could rotate that. But but check this out. This does not work when you're animating, unfortunately. So what you would have to do, well, oh, I want to show you that first, and then uh, go over what you would have to do to. Um, to make it work the way you wanted it to. So if I'm an auto key and I'm going to rotate this box, you know, rotating the way I just had it. So I'm going to move a couple frames or whatever. 
and then I'm working and I'm doing this and what do you know? Oh, it's rotating about its pivot again, right? Notice that my use um, pivot point center is on and I can't change it. So when you're in auto key, um, rotating is only about the pivot. That, that's just the way it goes. That because of the data stack, the way the data flows in 3ds Max, it it is based on the animation is based on the pivot point basically. So that that's the problem. So we're gonna turn off auto key and I'm back to using the transform coordinate center and stuff, right? So that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna turn that back off and just use pivot and stuff. So if I want to animate this box lifting up from its corner. I have to move the pivot to the corner. And I think we've had a little bit of experience doing that. I'm going to turn off the snap. Um, so here we go. I'm going to change the object's pivot, so I need to move it around. Um, you, shouldn't you shouldn't be able to do that by accident, so this is what you have to do. You have to go to the hierarchy panel, which is right next to the modify panel, and just turn on effect pivot only. So in this case, if I turn that on, it automatically goes to the move tool, but I'm gonna to go to the move tool anyway. Okay. And then, um, well, how do I get it to the corner of the box? Well, I could snap it, right? Or um, I could use the align tool, which is super cool. If I use the align tool to, um, I could align the, it's the, the box's own pivot to the vertex. So let's see how that works. So I'm gonna use the align tool. I already have, because I have the effect pivot only turned on, it's in effect, the, the pivot point is selected. So I'm gonna click the align tool and then click on the box. And here I go. So right now I'm gonna turn off the Z because it's already at the bottom, so that's nice. Um, but if I use the Z, I'm gonna, well, anyway. Um, I want to align the object, the current object, which is the pivot point, to, let's see, the, well, in the x direction, I want it to be on the minimum. So I have x minimum and apply. So now the pivot point is along that edge. That would work. I, I should be able to do that. But just to go a little bit further, maybe I want it to, to rotate, you know, maybe I'll rotate around that corner again. So I'm gonna use the Y coordinate also. So now it's on minimum, so it goes back to this corner. So now the pivot point is at the, the well, I don't know, lower left corner of the box, so okay. And then turn the effect pivot only off. Okay, so now if I use the rotate tool, and select my box. Did that? A little hard to tell here. Huh. I don't know that I selected the right object or that doesn't, certainly doesn't look like the pivot point of the box. <laughs> Yeah, let's try that again here. Um, let's use pivot point here and align. That's weird. Let's align it to itself. Box one, that's good. So Y and X to the minimum and okay. That's odd, that seems like a glitch. <laughs> Cause that's not the coordinate point that I want. So um, let's try this. Let's turn on the snap. Oh, we'll talk about those other ones. Um, pivot. So I'm going to click on this pivot and move it to this corner if I can, just by brute force here. So let's click on pivot. 
Where's Lauren? Um, don't know. Um, it looks like it's moving, but it doesn't, it isn't. Let's try another object here. We'll just draw another box. So I have pivot and vertex turned on, so that's nice. Let's just draw another box here. That box is a little weird. Turn off auto grid. Just draw a box out of here. Same looking box here. And now I'm going to go right to the effect pivot only. And I'm going to click on that pivot and move it to this corner. And then turn that off. Oh, I'm on. Um, The world coordinate. So what I want it to be, well, actually that's okay, but I want this to be on pivot point. Okay. So yeah, that's that should work now. <laughs> I, I didn't realize I was on the I was using the transform coordinate center. So whatever I was doing, I was rotating it about the the world's coordinate center rather than the object. So here we go. So I can go back to this one and rotate. And so now I can rotate about this point in both the X and the Z directions. Yeah. Oh, is that right? <laughs> okay. The next thing to do is talk about selecting a little bit more. Uh, like I said, the Q tool allows you to select things, right? So I can just click on something, hold the control key down, and select some more things, right? I can hold the alt key and click on something to remove it from what's already selected. Okay. So let's say I want to select all the cylinders, right? So I go through and control click all the cylinders, go throughout my scene, and I got, okay, I got all the cylinders selected. Well, that was a lot of work, right? And so I don't want to have to do that every time I want to select all these cylinders. And so maybe all the cylinders are a certain material or something like that, and I need to select them and adjust them with their material or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, there are times when you just want a certain set of selections done. So we can create a selection set here of just cylinders. So I'm gonna click in there and just type in a name for it. How about cylinders? There and hit enter. Now, if I have a teapot selector or something and I say, oh, well, I really just want cylinders selected and it selects all those cylinders again, that whatever's in that selection set. So there you go, and we can edit or manage uh, the selection sets. This pulls up a window, and it tells me all the cylinders I have in that. And so what if I say, well, this teapot is really a cylinder at heart or something. So I can click on that cylinder, I mean that teapot, and I can add selected objects, right? So I could deselect all of them, just pick this teapot and add that to the selected set, maybe. There we go. I had to select the, the name and then add that. Okay, so now, um, and I can take them away or whatever, or create a new set all inside this, this little floating box. So now, um, just selecting the cylinders selection set, the teapot is included in, in that group shouldn't say group because a group is also um, something that you can do. There's a group menu here where you can just group certain objects together so they can act together and those are animatable. So um, a whole selection and if they need to move together, rotate together and things like that, um, it gets a little weird. But um, groups are very good for doing that. Okay. Let's see. Uh, seems like a lot <laughs> already. Uh, but 
there's um, just a couple more tools that I want to go over. And they're not in the menu so much. I feel like I'm skipping something. Oh, let's go back to this the selection a little bit. I didn't give it enough credit or do. So um, you can select by just clicking on stuff with the select tool or any of these other selecting tools, such as the move and select, the rotate and select, scale and select, and select in place, Okay, which we haven't talked about yet. But we can also select by name or hit H on the keyboard. And the select from the scene gives a list of all the objects in the scene. So you can just, just pick out of there the object that you want to select. So that's quite useful, especially if you named all your objects, right? So in this case, I haven't, but so I have cylinder one through four, and I don't know which one's which. I don't remember which order I made them and things like that. But if I had named each of these, then I should be able to pick them out of that list very nicely. So, so that's the H or select by name tool or option. And then next to it, you have, um, this is a lot like Photoshop. You can use a lasso tool or a rectangular selection marquee or a, an elliptical or marquee. And in this case, there's, there's five different, different ones that you can use. And again, uh, the Q tool, if just hitting Q repeatedly, toggles through those options. So let's go over them. The rectangular. Rectangular selection set, there's actually two ways that you can do that. Notice that the selection just has to hit the box or be inside of it. And so in this case, this window is hitting the cone, a cylinder, and a teapot. And it's not hitting the cylinder totally inside of it, but it's around it, so it should, it should select it too. And it does. However, if you go to customize, you can turn, or not even customize, you can turn this one on. Shift O or crossing window. And what that does is it forces, let me deselect, that forces whatever objects you want to select to be totally inside of that box. So I do the same thing, even more, then the only thing that's going to get selected here is the cylinder that's totally inside that box. Nothing else falls completely within that box. The teapot comes closest, but it still doesn't. So there I go. I was only able to select that cylinder because it was totally inside the box. So that's a crossing window uh, or a not crossing window. <laughs> so the not crossing window just has to hit it and or be in it. There's another way to do this. <laughs> And it's probably the most useful. It's kind of a hybrid of both of those. And so I have to go to preferences to get this. And right here under scene selection, auto by direction, auto window crossing by direction. So uh, right to left is crossing, left to right is crossing. Um, probably right to left makes the most sense, but not necessarily, right? So this is what they mean. So with that selection turned on, then it's a, it has to fall totally within the object if I started from the left and went right, right? So this should select the teapot, okay? But if I start on the right and go left, whatever hits it will get selected. Does that make sense? We okay with all I that? Like, I feel like that setting would probably work a lot more than any of the other ones. That, that one seems easier because you could do that from the right to the left or left to the right. I feel like that one would be more useful than having to toggle between the other two. Yeah, me too. Um, in fact, this is the default in AutoCAD, um, a CAD program that uses 3D as well as 2D. Um, and and Autodesk actually bought them. Autodesk owns both of them, so that's why they've added that. And it wasn't until they had purchased 3ds Max to where this window crossing came into effect anyway. So it's it's a direct result of who bought the software. <laughs> so yeah, good good 
Good point. And that is the default in, in AutoCAD, which is on all the machines in the lab also, is that uh, right to left is, is a window. It has to be totally inside the window and left to right. It's even a different color. It highlights the, the rectangle with a, with a green and going left to right is blue. But and that was the only thing you did was you just checked that auto window crossing by direction? Yeah. So if, yeah, and you can switch it, right? So you can go left to right is whatever hits it gets selected. And left, I mean, if you start on the right and go left, then it has to be totally inside the box. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so let's go over some of these other tools. Uh, I'll leave that on by default. It might may, may mess me up, but <laughs> so I'll hit Q a couple times. So, um, you know, a circular selection, again, um, left to right, it still holds true, right? So left to right, only that cylinder gets selected, uh, right to left, whatever, Okay, so the teapot's the only thing that's totally inside that, but everything else hits it almost, except for this one box down here. And, and still a single click will also select. So hit Q a couple more times. Here's a polygon or a fence selecting. So I can, you know, just draw a box around an object to get it to select. Again, if I had started yeah, that was kind of hard to tell. <laughs> so if I had started from the right, I don't think this matters actually. I think with the fence, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's not sophisticated enough to tell, or maybe I did start that way, but if I start this way, I'll just clip this edge here and then close it. Yeah, see how it didn't select that cone even though it hit it? And even this one didn't get selected. But still, with the fencing, you can just single click on anything and select something. OK, Q again. And this is a, like the lasso tool where I can just drag, hold the mouse button down, and, and hit it. Notice left to right has to be totally inside the window. And a single click will still select. A fun one, especially when we get to sub objects like vertices and stuff. Some objects may have lots of vertices, like that teapot might have a lot of them. Um, I can use the paint, right? So Q again, it gets me my paintbrush. So all I got to do is paint over something. Wow, with that window, it's not going to work unless it's totally inside of it. That's interesting. Um, yeah, there's a keyboard shortcut way of, maybe if I right click on that, yeah. Um, I can change the brush size. So now, as long as it's totally inside that, it's going to select it. <laughs> so there's a drawback to having that turned on, is the paint can doesn't quite work. So let me turn that back off. So I'm gonna uncheck that. Set this back down to 20. I think that's what it was. And now if I paint, all I got to do is hit it. All I got to do is hit the object to paint to select it as I drag my mouse. So if you use the paint a lot, maybe you'd want to turn that off. A right click gets you to that same window where you can toggle that back on and off. So it's pretty easy to access. All right. A um, couple other tools. Um, how much time do we have? Seems like I've been talking a long time. Yeah, 15 minutes. OK. Um, I want to go over the array tool. The array tool allows you to make copies of objects in three dimensions, right? So um, use the teapot as an example. And I need to write mouse button click on a blank area over here and I need extras. So I'm gonna pull up another toolbar. I think I have room over here to dock it. So I'm just gonna dock it over here. 
maybe I want it over, yeah, maybe right here. There. That's a good place for it. Um, so this has some other tools on here. Um, here's that auto grid um, to turn on and off. Um, we can measure, we, there's a measure tool, and then here's the array tool. There's actually three um, types of array, actually four, sorry, there, that's actually me. Anyway, the first one is what I want to talk about right now. So I have the teapot selected and I picked the array tool. This array box is actually pretty powerful. So um, using my pivot point center here, um, but so I'm just going to make copies of this teapot. And in one direction, let's just turn on the preview. And I don't see anything happening. And that's because I don't have any offset, right? So there are 10 teapots. If I click OK, I'll have 10 teapots based on this count number here. And it tells me how many in the total array that I'll get. But uh, there are 10 teapots on top of each other, right? So if I put it in like the X direction, if I give it some distance here, there we go. So now I can see those 10 teapots uh, all being arrayed in a line, right? So if I give it a little bit of X offset, I can shift it in the X and the Y direction, and I can shift it in the X and Z direction if I'd like. So I'm gonna zero those out, right click, just in the X for now. But what if I wanna make it a two-dimensional array? Oh, okay, how are you? And so I click on two-dimensional, and then I have, I, so, um, I can offset the the row that um for the second dimension here and see how many teapots. So maybe I'll just do another ten. Okay, and then I don't want to offset it in the X anymore, but maybe just in the Y. So I have like forty three. Well, whatever. I'll just do that. And so um, just there we go. Let's go negative so I can go this side. So yeah, there's a hundred teapots with just a couple settings. Okay, of course, three dimensions and set off the Z. So we're gonna do what, 10 more? Yeah, we can crash the computer, right? So um, let's give it, I'm just gonna type in a number here because it's, yeah, it's not gonna be happy. <laughs> so let's go 50 and wait for it. <laughs> there we go, I'm gonna click okay. Come back out. So here are a thousand teapots all in a nice matrix, right? Doesn't this remind you of the matrix? You ever see that movie? I can't say I actually watched the whole thing, which is weird. It's a pretty old movie. Okay, there you go. There's there's a thousand teapots for you. It's not the only thing it can do. So th that's nice, right? It makes you, you know, that that's quite useful. Let me undo. So I'll give back. To <laughs> to here. Um, let's use, here, um, I hit, let's say that this is gonna be like a, a, a ship's map, uh, what do you call it, the helm of a ship, and that's gonna be the wheel that turns the rudder. So this is like the handle and stuff, I don't know. So I want basically all these two cylinders, I'm gonna select both of them, and I want to rotate those about this cylinder, right? So here's here's how to do that. <laughs> so um, let's take, I'm gonna select, well actually I'm not gonna select anything. And I'm gonna change my reference coordinate system to pick. And so this allows me to choose an object to be set as the coordinate system center. So it's the coordinate system for everything else. So I can click on pick, and then I'll click on the object. So now I have cylinder one as my reference coordinate system. And then, not only that, now that I have that, I'm gonna change, uh, well, I don't think I have to change much now. Let's see if that works without me having to change to the reference coordinate system. I think I do need to change that actually. So now I'm gonna select, the, the the handle of the wheel, I guess. And then I'm gonna use the array tool. Okay, let's see what that can do for me. So in this case, I don't wanna move them, I wanna rotate them. So 
so here's here's the rotate uh, area of this of this command. Now I'll go back to one dimensional because I'm just going to rotate it in one direction here. And what direction is that actually? Um, seems to me that's the Z direction because I'm using this brownish orange I guess, or the brown or what is that? It's like a greenish mauve. There's a better color name for that. Puke. Anyway, um, I'm using this cylinder as the coordinate system. So it's Z direction is what I want to pick. So if I rotate this about the Z direction, well, I probably have to preview it, right? So see how they're, well, they're all being in the, um, they're all just sitting here like, like this. But what I want to do is set that to zero. So I'm not moving them in the X, Y, or Z, but I do want to rotate them in the X, Y, and Z. So there I go. Well, okay, if I want 10, then shouldn't that number be a 36? So now I have 10 items at 36 degrees apart, so that's 360 degrees. Uh, maybe that's too many. So maybe I want eight. So what's that, 45 degrees? I'll put that to eight. So now I've just made eight copies of that around a certain center of, of my object. Is that all right? Okay. Great. There are, let's see, um, I think these other ones require us to, to talk about a few more things before we go on. So I'll, we'll address the other options in that array command uh, or under that array toolbar um, later. Anyway, um, making um, something like that, like a ceiling fan would be pretty useful or something. So, so good. In fact, let's see. 10 minutes. Let's see if we can make a ceiling fan, a simple one, out of this. So I'll undo that. Keep things in perspective here. Let's just move. I'm going to take this cylinder and I'm going to align it with this other cylinder. This will be like the, the part of my ceiling fan. So I'm going to align it with this cone, I guess. So I'll use the align tool here. And I'm going to take this cylinder and align it with this cone first. So use the align tool and pick it up here. So there's a couple things I want to do is, um, well, now see, I'm still using that cylinder one as the, as the coordinate system, which is actually okay, but, <coughs> excuse me, um, let's change it back to the world coordinate system here. And um, yeah. Um, that works. So I'm back on world. Select that and use the align tool and pick the cone. Okay. So I'm going to use, I'm just going to set them there for now and pivot point to pivot point, center to center, and I'm just going to align the x axis. Yeah, and that, that totally aligned it and just click OK. So there I go. Um, it's in good position now. Um, all I got to do now is, let me turn that zoom on. Um, use the move tool and use the pivot point and move it up a little bit and out a little bit. There we go. Let's delete this box. I'll just clear some other stuff out here. And maybe I want to increase the length of that cylinder, just the height of it now, so I can have that sticking out. And then maybe I want this box to be aligned. So, um, so we could use a snap for that. So I want to put this box at the end of that, and that'll be the blade, and I can change like you know the length 
make it a little longer. I could just do that, I guess, instead of moving it. But um, I'm going to go ahead and move it using snaps just because, just because. So I'm going to right click on that three magnet, the snap toggle. It's on right now. Um, I don't want vertex because I just want the center of these faces. So uncheck vertex, uncheck pivot, and center face. How about that? Let's see if I can get that. Yeah, I think I can get that. Or how about midpoint? See these faces? The faces are actually the triangulated faces. So that's not going to quite work. What about midpoint? Will midpoint work? Yeah. Maybe not. It's actually not going to work. So, yeah, I can kind of just, no. So, um, Let's just turn that off and use the align tool. <laughs> so with it selected, I'm use the align tool and align it to this. Now I don't want center point, you know, in the X, Y, and Z. I want well. Um, how about center to center to start with? And I'll click apply. And then what am I in the Y direction? So I want its minimum to be with the maximum in just the Y direction. The other way around, maximum to the minimum in the Y. Yeah, there we go. So there we go. <laughs> so at this point, I have like this fan blade going on and maybe I'd want to put like a little twist to it. So modifier, there's a twist option going on somewhere. And I want to twist it along its, I think the Z is what I want. So the angle, um, no, it's not. I want the Y. And then change its angle and twist it. And I'm going to have to edit the bias, right? Or let me see if I can send that bias back to, nope. The bias isn't going to help me much, but the lower limit, I'm going to set up a little bit. So that gonna, nope, that's not going to help me either. And neither is the upper limit. <laughs> okay, but the because this, the pivot point is at this weird place, I want to just move the center of that twist to be at the end of the object. So I'm just now I'm just you know I could align it I guess, but in this case I'm just going to eyeball it. So there's the center of the twist. And now as I adjust the twist, maybe I don't want such an extreme angle, but just a little bit of an angle for the, um, for the fan blade. Now, the other thing I have to worry about is when I hit F3 on the keyboard, I want it to see, I don't have any edges on this. And so it's not a smooth transition. It's just kind of being skewed. So let's go back to box. And let's increase the number of length segments and width segments and even height segments. Is that going to help? I don't know if that's going to help me much. So yeah, that allows a little bit of bias. I can throw in there and change that up a little bit and put a little more angle on it. Okay, good enough. Well, anyway, so I have this nice, you know, I spent so much time on that. I want to, um, you know, rotate that about the center of this object, right? So um, change this back to pick and pick on this cone. And then I can select these two objects and then rotate them or, or make an array of these, maybe just a five. <clears throat> a bladed fan. So with those selected, about that pivot point, let's go five and let's preview that. Oh, and I'm not using, okay, so um, I'm using that, but I'm not using this. See how it's rotating about its own center of the selected item? I really need this. 
the the transformed coordinate center so that it's actually rotating it about the coordinate system which is the cone right now so that's what you got to do before you um, select the array and then if i preview that now it's being rotated about that because so i only want five of those around not 45 degrees but 72 degrees and that gives me a nice ceiling fan well the start of one anyway there you go so cool now if i were to animate that <laughs> that might be a little tricky because um well we'll get into that when we get to animation and stuff but but to do that, to have them rotate about that, I'd have to move this, the pivots to the center of the cone of all these objects. And so maybe I should have done that before I did the array. So let's actually, do I have time? I have one minute. If anybody's still here, right? <laughs> hey, you guys stuck around. Okay, so before I do that, um, I'm gonna move the pivots of these objects, okay? using the align tool to the center of the cone. So pivot to the X, Y, and Z center of the cone. Um, okay, now I'm still at the cone. Like this guy here and do the same thing. The point to the center or the pivot point of the cone. I might've missed that before. Anyway, pivot point to center and OK. And then let me see if this one works. Pivot point to center of the cone. There we go. And then uncheck that. So now, um, if I, so at this point, I, I guess I sort of am out of time. But anyway, I'm going to select both of these guys. And now I'm just going to use the rotate tool. See, at this point, I'm still going to rotate about the, well, give me more rotate tool and use cone one and use the transform coordinate center. And now I'm just going to hold the shift key down and rotate it 72 degrees, right? Well, I don't have that 72 here, so I got to right click on this and change this to two degrees or maybe just, what, 24 degrees? <laughs> and so <laughs> that makes it a little easier. So, um, shift drag it around 72 right there and then copies uh four copies right and so now i've i've done the same thing by because i've changed the, the pivot points and by doing that i can animate it so anyway i'm done so um we'll start a new project an assignment on on wednesday but anyway, um, play with that, practice that, have some of those intro videos that you can look at, and we'll see you Wednesday. Are there any other questions, though? I'm, I'm happy to stick around if you have any. Um, yeah, I had one. Um, how did you bring up the array tool? Um, I had to close down my... Oh, my right. Quick. So it's in this extras toolbar, and that can be accessed by just right-clicking on a blank part of your toolbar and, going to, and, okay. and turning on extras. Oh, okay. All righty. Cool. We okay? Uh, I yep. also had another one. Whenever I'm putting up a box, it goes up in increments of 10 rather than free form. Oh, right. So yeah, um, and that's because we, like when you make a box and you put it down here, um, see how that's going easily? Um, and that's because your spinner snap isn't turned on. Or wait. Where is it? What do I have as my spinner? You snap. Oh, uh, maybe it's your snap toggle because there is a 3D grid that it looks at. So if that's turned on, let me see if that works. See how it kind of snaps like this? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, okay. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, so just hit S on the keyboard. Even while you're making that, turn S, and now it's smooth, right? Hit S on the keyboard, now it's not. OK, thank you. Yeah, good. OK, we're good. Stop sharing.
Okay, we'll see you guys Wednesday then. Bye. All right, have a good day. You too. Bye. Good day. Bye. Bye.